Greetings friend, this is video 2 of a 3 part tutorial series on Sudoku coloring. In this video, I will show you how to apply coloring to multiple candidates in order to solve hard to extremely difficult Sudoku puzzles. The last example is the most important for you to fully understand the concepts. Puzzle and video links for my examples are in the description below and with that, it's solving time. Okay, for my first example, this is Chasing Down Pairs by Amber Dot. I got the video and puzzle link below. A uh, very fun puzzle, and it's centered on remote pairs. Well, what I want to do is show you how coloring works using remote pairs. And this is really nice, and it's a good way to show you how multiple candidate coloring works. Now, if you remember from my first tutorial, simple coloring, aka singles chains, it's a strategy that allows you to solve and eliminate candidates by looking for contradictions but you're just focused on one candidate. In multiple candidate coloring, or multi-coloring as I call it, this is a strategy where you use different colors to represent related candidates in a chain to help you solve or eliminate candidates. And I'll explain that to you. It's actually pretty simple on how we do it. But I do need to make two quick points here. First point, multiple candidate coloring is not the same as multi-coloring or multicoloring of single candidates. If you Google multicoloring, it will show you different methods to use different colors to solve one candidate. That's not what we're doing here. In fact, in Hodoku, if you put in multicoloring, it shows you that strategy. Instead, I'm showing you what's a much more popular strategy that's used all the time in variants. You'll see Simon Anthony, Mark Goodliffe, Bremster, uh, those guys use multiple candidate coloring to solve variant Sudokus and even classic Sudokus. So it's very uh, popular and handy and you can crack a really hard puzzle that which is what I'm going to show you in this tutorial second quick point unlike simple coloring uh, since people use this in variants you can use a strategy pretty easily with the Sudoku pad app however I'm going to keep using Hodoku is what you see here Hodoku for consistency across my three tutorials because I need to use Hodoku for parts one and three. So I'm going to show you all this in Hodoku today, but you can easily apply it to Sudoku pad or F colors. All right, here's what we're going to do. So what you want to do with multi coloring is you pick and you notice that there, you know, there's pairs of candidates that form a link. In this case, you probably notice there's lots of ones and nines in this puzzle. So if we start right here, and we color this and we go, we don't know if this is one or nine, but we're going to say one of those will represent that color with a orange. You come over here. Well, this will have to be the opposite of it, right? If this is a one, that'd be nine. We don't know what it is yet, but we'll just keep alternating the colors as we move along. If this is purple, we know this would also be orange. So we know whatever's in this cell has to be in this cell because of the way this link works. And then we can go over here and go, there's another one nine. So this would have to be a purple. Okay, and now we can kind of branch off and go, okay, this, uh, anything in the house that is the opposite of it, we can use. So in this block, we can make that orange, we can make this orange. Great. And then we can come over here and make this a purple. All right. And then we can come up and we can make this an orange up here, make this a purple, alternate. We got an orange here and we got a purple there. One thing you might notice is I didn't color this cell because it has an additional two in there, so we can't use that. And now what you're trying to do is you're trying to make eliminations. And here's how it works. Anytime two opposite colors see a particular cell, you can eliminate both of those candidates from the cell. So anytime they see both a orange and a blue, or orange and a purple, we can eliminate a one and a nine from both of those candidates from that cell because we know one of these has to be a one, one of these has to be a nine. We just know which one's yet. And so I want to point something out to you real quick. So we look right here and you see that this cell and this cell both see right here. You got a one, four, and nine. You cannot make an elimination based on it because it's the same color, right? These are both orange. So that's not going to help us. We don't want to, uh, we can't make the elimination there, but we can do make some eliminations uh, looking across some of these other cells. Let's start down here in row nine, right? We got a purple and we got an orange right here. That means uh, we can eliminate all the other ones and nines right there. So you can do some really quick cleanup and go, okay, can't have a one or nine in those other cells. You go over here in row seven, same thing. I got one nine here, one nine here. You can't have a one or nine in any of those cells, which makes this a two, four, seven. Uh, 
naked triple. Okay. And then if we go up in here in, in row four, I actually missed one of the colors. So I need to color that purple and go, okay, let's look up here in row four. That can't be, oh, that could be a two. That can't be a one nine. This can't be a one or a nine. So we could actually make the solve right here. We could solve that for a two. Awesome. And so that eliminates the two from right there. And you could actually make this in orange if you want. So that's pretty cool how that worked. Uh, so you see now because this cell saw both, we can make the elimination. But we couldn't do the coloring on it initially. And then the, the key cell you want to focus on is actually right here, row three, column five. You'll notice you got a purple right here in row three, and you got an orange in column five. And so you can eliminate a one and a nine from right here and solve this cell for a three. And this is like the huge strategy, uh, huge breaking point in this puzzle where I was able to eventually solve everything else uh, using that strategy. And this is awesome because once you make that solve, uh, you make a lot more progress in the puzzle. What you might notice is now you got a one nine and a one nine right here. So you can solve that for a four, which makes this a nine and makes this a one. And then the thing I want to point out, as soon as you get one of these colors figured out, every other one of that color you can solve right away for that candidate. And you can solve the other one for the other candidate. So I know every single orange is a one right now. So I can solve all these for a one. And that's the power behind this multiple candidate coloring. And then I know every single purple has to be a nine. Okay. This is a lot of fun. Um, and you can always apply this to Sudoku remote pairs. And subscribe to some more hobbies if you like solving Sudoku remote pairs. I love using this coloring strategy in my remote pair solving. It is so much fun. Before we move on to our next example, if you want to receive puzzle packs and exclusive content from setters like this, click on the pin comment below to join the Smarty Party. I've got amazing puzzle packs coming out every month, and you get to use awesome strategies like this from the best setters that you will see. Now, let's move on to our next example. All right, for our next example, this is Glitter Box by Keen Luck. This was a puzzle that just blew me away. And what's neat about this is I actually titled the name of the video, you know, how to solve Sudoku Smart on a computer. Because if you put this in a computer solver, it goes nuts. It uses really complicated forcing chains. But if we apply Sudoku coloring to it, it becomes quite manual for a human to solve. And we get to use three different colors in order to solve this puzzle awesome puzzle okay so let's see how this works what you might notice is you know there's some interesting stuff going on on the ends on column one row one and then over here in block nine you have this uh, interesting set of four cells which limits what can go in these rows and columns i'll show you that in just a second the only thing you can solve right away is you can notice that there's a hidden single seven here in block seven and then there's gonna be a hidden single eight up here. And after that, you get kind of lost, but you probably notice that there's a one, two, and three across the top, one, two, three coming down, and there's a lot of other one, twos, and threes scattered throughout this puzzle. You know, like right here, right here, right here. So we can use that to our advantage to do some coloring. So what you wanna do is to start assigning colors. Let's assign pink to this cell, let's assign orange to this cell, and we'll assign purple to this cell, like I did in the main video. And what you want to notice is, well, we don't know which one of these is the one, two, and three, but we know they can be represented by three different colors. Now we can make some actual, we can actually make some further deductions by that. You'd be like, okay, do you know if this is a orange or a purple? And the answer is, we can't make this one a purple, because if you made this a purple, then whatever that is, a one, two, three, it couldn't be in any of these three cells, and it couldn't be in any of these three cells because this purple looks down on it. So that's the kind of the neat thing you need to notice about these four cells here. So what we know is this can't be purple. This has to be orange. All right. And then this would have to be purple. That's a key deduction you need to make. Obviously, it couldn't be the pink one because the pink one is already in column one. Now, what you want to see is you want to look at how the colors interact with each other. Well, I got this orange cutting across row nine. I got this orange coming down column but what it means is the only place left for the orange, so whatever 
value that is, it has to be right there, right? Because that's the only place you can put it. We know it can't be a 5, 7, or 9, so we know it has to be right here. And now we can make some further deductions. What we can deduce is that, well, this cell can't be a 1, and these cells can't be a 6. So you can eliminate the 6 from here, and you eliminate the 1 here, because we know it is the same number. It has to be the same number. So you can use that to make some deductions. Another thing, now you have these two orange cells here. Where can orange be down here in block 9? Well, it, can, it can't be any of these three cells, and it can't be this cell because they're already covered by these two. So we know this right here has to be orange. And then we can eliminate the 1 because we know it can't be a 1. So we know orange is going to be a 2 or 3, and there's the places it has to be so far. So this is great. And now we want to apply some of this logic also to the purple. And this is how you're using the multi-coloring. All right, you know, this purple cuts across row five, and this one comes down column nine. So this cell is the only place left where you can put the purple, right? It's not a five, eight, or nine, and it can't fit in these other cells. So it has to be right here. This has to be the purple value. And we know one, two, or three, this can't be a two. So we can eliminate the twos from here. And we know the, that these cells can't be a 7, so we can limit the 7 from right there. It has to be the same digit. So this is neat stuff. And then you look and go, okay, where can the purple cell be down here in block 9? Well, it can't be in column 7, and it can't be in column 9 already, so it has to be right here. This has to be purple. And again, we know it's got to be a 1 or a 3, so you can eliminate that 2 and the 9 right away. And actually, once you eliminate this 9, this puzzle really starts to fall apart because you know now where the 9 is going to be in column nine and this is great and so another thing we can kind of figure out this is orange and this is purple and this is a one two or three we know this has to be the other value so you can actually place the pink value right here we know that has to be pink and since now you have the all three of these in the same house you can eliminate one two and three from every other cell and so that how it works out is you eliminate the one two and three from there you eliminate the one two or three from there and you can easily see this is a five and this is a nine. And so if you want to continue on solving this puzzle, I'll tell you, you want to look at where the nines can be and where the fives can be, and it's all hidden in naked singles from this point. This is a genius way of using coloring to a classic Sudoku. I love what Keen Lux did with this puzzle. My next example is absolutely critical for you to fully understand multiple candidate coloring. But there's still another powerful strategy that I cover in part three that you need to watch if you want to be a true master of Sudoku coloring. You can click to watch that at the end of this video, but for now, let's move on to the next example. For my final example, this is the puzzle Smile by Shy, and I covered it in an analysis video. Simon Anthony actually solved it on Cracking the Cryptic. And this is using multiple coloring, but you're actually going to be able to color multiple candidates with the same color. And I'll show you how that works. This is fascinating stuff. And so we got to this point in the puzzle and Simon was trying to figure out if this seven, eight could be the same as that seven, eight right there. And so let's kind of walk you through and go, is that the same? you know, are these the same candidate or could they be different candidates? So let's use a color right here and go, okay, if this is orange and the seven, eight, what does that mean down here? It means that these two cells would have to be the opposite, right? They'd contain a one, but they also have to contain either the seven or an eight, the opposite of what's up in the orange. And so we know this one is going to be a purple. And since this would be the opposite, you can use the color to cover both of these cells and go, okay, one of those has got to contain that opposite candidate. Then you'll know that the flip side, since this is a two, four and can, cannot contain a seven or an eight, these cells will contain a nine plus the orange candidate. So you can put the orange candidate right there. And this is really cool because now as you cut across here, you know, you got a nine in here, one in the orange candidate, you go over, this would have to contain a one and the purple candidate. So you can put the purple here. You can actually eliminate the nines because these nines are a pointing pair, right? But we know that, and then you come down and go, okay, well, because of the two nine right there, we know that the orange cell has to be down here with this four. And so this is really cool. I'm kind of showing you that you can apply it to multiple. The only reason and the only time you can do it, it does need to be a locked candidate. So what locked candidates mean is that they have to belong to two houses, at least two houses. So in this case, they got to be in the column and in the block for this to work. Just like these are in the row and in the block. All right. So use this only with locked candidates. Since these 
one of the uh, these has to be that orange candidate. Then we know this one right here has got to be purple. All right, this is the great deduction that Simon came up with. If this is a seven, by following all the colors, this cell would have to be an eight. If this is an eight, this would have to be a seven. And this is the logic that Shai wanted Simon to find and wants you to find for solving this puzzle. Because you look right here and you can eliminate the seven and the eight from both of those cells. So you can eliminate a seven, eight from right there. You can actually eliminate a seven and eight from right there. And what that does is now, you know, you can solve this cell for a nine, which is huge. And then you can actually look here and go, this is a two nine, this is a two nine. You can eliminate all the other twos and nines up and down columns. You can actually eliminate a nine from right there as well. I wanted to kind of point that out. But this is the key to solving this puzzle because now it breaks it down and makes this a much easier solve. If you try to go to traditional methods, it's much harder to find the solve here. If you want to learn the most powerful Sudoku coloring strategy, then you need to check out part three of this tutorial series where I cover 3D Medusa. If you are watching this before part three is released, enjoy this video that YouTube picked out for you instead. Thank you, Setters, for these wonderful puzzles, and thank you so much for watching.